time last week. And then I come back to find this right here. So this is the male. I'm guessing. And I've had him on camera several times also. All right, guys, I'm out here on the, the line where I caught those uh, two bobcats. Checking my sets. This is where I caught the, uh, the female the first time. It was right there, and they call that a covey set. And for a lure, you can still see some of it back there. I had a, a rabbit leg that I'd covered up back there, and I had two traps out here, and they're still there. Last week when I came by, the one on the left had been <clears throat> triggered, and uh, I'd missed the bobcat. I had it on camera coming over here, and uh, it had marked right here on the ground where I'm standing, and I missed it then. And then down here a ways, I caught another bobcat. It was like two days after this one. And then I reset this trap down here on, I wanna say, man, I can't even remember what day it was now. I have to go back and look, but it's been like four days probably. It was, it was sometime last week. And then I come back to find this right here. So this is, the male, I'm guessing. And I've had him on camera several times also. So we're uh, getting numbers under, under control here. I'm really happy about it. My first uh, three cats within a week of me trying this. And it's, it's really working out. Um, and the customer's super, super happy about it. I'm pretty happy about it myself. Uh, again, this is where we're seeing all the quail. And having these cats here um, is no good for the quail. Uh, we have very limited numbers here, and we're trying to get those numbers up. And having these cats here are just going to prevent us from doing that. So getting the cat numbers in check will uh, help us bring up the quail population. So I'm really happy. He is not happy. Yeah, I just caught a, a smaller bobcat on that same trap just a couple of days ago. Uh, reset the trap, refreshed it with uh, some liver and uh, bobcat urine. And bam. Really happy, really happy. All right, guys, y'all are gonna get to see me uh, use this dirt that I collected earlier in my bucket down by the creek. Y'all saw that we caught a bobcat. I got a pole right in the middle. Okay. Y'all saw that we caught a bobcat. Caught it on this trap. It's the second bobcat I've caught on this particular trap in the same spot. Uh, within a week so we are going to try our luck again with this trap in this location and I'm gonna try and reset everything right here for y'all before my b phone battery dies because it's getting low and y'all be able to see me reset one of these uh, spring spring traps. So these traps right here, I was told are 20 years old, so they are in some rough condition. Condition. They are still functional, but you gotta you gotta play with them. Oh man, and try not to get your finger caught in the process. All right, 
So now that is reset, okay? So I'm gonna dig my bed back out so I can put my trap back in here. And you'll get to see me remake it. So I'm gonna turn it this way a little bit. So I'm just digging me a spot out to rest my trap. Okay. And I've just started doing this, guys. So if you're a professional and watching this and you see me do something wrong, I do apologize. So I still got a bunch to learn. So we're gonna make sure that our trap is bedded. Okay, so I'm gonna come around and push in and make sure that this trap does not wiggle. That is one of the most important things that they say makes or breaks whether you catch something. And you can see how much it's still wiggling. So I got to pack in some of this mud right here. Around the base. You do not want that animal to feel anything shift up under his feet when he steps on it. It's still moving way too much. Like I said earlier, a bunch of clay around here. So this, in this situation, this is where clay kind of helps because it's kind of sticky. So I'm putting it around the base and that's kind of helping my trap stay put. And a professional, he'll be able to do this a lot faster than what I am. Like I said, I just started. So now I can touch that and it don't really go nowhere, okay? So now I'm gonna try and fill in around it, but not over it. Make sure that there ain't no big chunks. So I'm gonna get up under my pan. The pan is the flat part right there that the animal steps on to trigger the trap. Make sure that nothing gets up under there. That's too big. We're gonna pull all this in a little bit. Now, that last bobcat peed and marked all over this, which is a good thing. That means it's going to help attract the next bobcat. Um, and, and that was uh, how I caught this, that big one just then, was uh, the previous one that I caught here had marked in the same spot. And I uh, used some of its urine to mark back here on this tree. And like I was saying earlier, you don't want no no kind of attraction being pulled to your trap and people say you're not supposed to use the same gloves for the trap as you do uh your uh, bait or in this case urine and stuff so technically i'm supposed to be using some different gloves i think but this is what i got to work with now like i said i'm not a professional just getting started okay so so that's part of that. Now, we're gonna come in and sprinkle dry, sandy dirt that we got down by the creek around this. We don't want clobs, we just want good sand, sandy soil to cover this up. And then I'll show you what we do after that. And then you have what they call pan covers. So that's a big clog we want to get out. You don't want clogs in there. There's another one that's up under there I gotta get out. You don't want big clogs up under your pan. You just want sand or some kind of other material. They do make uh, pan covers that you can cover your pan with so nothing can get up under here. But I don't have none. You can put sheep's wool or some kind of material like that up under here. 
just to keep rocks and stuff from getting up under there. Again, if there's a clog, you gotta get that big clog out. I hope my battery don't die while I'm doing this. It's taking me a long time, like I said, because I'm new. I'm just trying to make sure I get all the sandy stuff that I can and nothing that's too too cloggy. Okay, then when we get it like that, we're just gonna brush our pan off just a little bit so it ain't mounded up, okay? There's my pan, right there, okay? I'm gonna fill in around it, let all that loose, sandy material go up under there. As long as it's not big clogs, we'll, we're all right. Don't want it to clog up. I'm gonna put a little bit more sand on top. Want it to look natural. Okay. 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 So that's step one right there. We got the bed, uh, the trap bedded. We got it covered up. Now I'm gonna show you a different perspective. Okay. So. You see how open this is, right? Our trap's right there, and our lure is right here. Your bait will also be back here. An animal can come from any direction to work. This is called a set, to work this set. We don't want it to be able to come from any direction, okay? When I first made this set, I had thick briars coming up. You see where the stems and everything were at. They were coming up right here. I had a piece of this barbed wire fence it was running down through here. See that right there? It was running down through here. There was a bunch of natural material that was poked up, trying, uh, that was poked up, keeping the cat from coming in from the side. And it could only come in from the front. And that's what you want with uh, the animals that you're trapping, coyotes, cats. You want it to be able to come just from the front to work that set, okay? So now I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna stop the video and I'm gonna, get some branches and stuff some of this stuff right here and i'm going to build up on the side again try and make it look as natural as possible to where whatever animal the cat and i may even catch a coyote off of this whatever animal comes through it's going to have to come from the front and it's going to have to step we're going to make this the smoothest part we're going to put little clogs and everything right here sticks poking up we want this to be the smoothest easiest spot for that animal to step while it's checking this bait out okay all right, I'm gonna pause the video and set this up how I think it should be. And then uh, I'll bring y'all back to look at it and see what we got. All right, guys, I've remade this set and I don't know if I've uh, screwed myself or not making it look unnatural, but uh, we'll see, we'll find out. So this piece right here was just sitting right here, just a few feet away, okay? So I moved this over, right? Took some of that bob wire that was laying on the ground, pulled it back up. Let's see, I kind of got some sticks leaned up right here. Some pokey things, stems poking up that the other bobcat had broke. I didn't even do that. So we got this as trying to be as natural as possible. And I've got some hair back here, a chunk of hair with bobcat urine on it. And there's my trap and you can see i got more there's some bob wire right there that was already there i got a, some uh a stick poking up out of the ground so really whatever animal comes comes to check this out they can't come from that way hopefully they can't come from that way they have to come from the front right here and the only good spots to step is right there and that's where my trap's at if they want to check out that scent and check out that bait, they've got to step right there. So fingers crossed, this spot, that trap has two cats. Up here is the cubby set. You can see it right through there. That has a cat. So three cats off this one line right here. And we had several on camera. We have, uh, like I said in another video, a cat stalking quail that were working this trail right here. The, all the quail were right here in this feed line. And the bobcat came uh, right down this trail, spooked the quail. You see the quail fly off. And then uh, 
later that night same the, the same day but at night you see the cat coming back from this way with a quail in its mouth so like i said we're not out here just catching random things you know the main goal is to get the quail numbers up for this customer and nest raiders have to go to a, to a certain extent and then bobcats to a certain extent have to be uh the numbers have to be pulled down so we are doing a good job for this customer we're trying to turn all this into quail prime quail habitat and get these quail numbers up but i'm very happy with the results that we're getting and uh hopefully i'll keep learning uh, this is new to me hopefully i'll keep building my skill that's something i'd like to improve on in uh 2024 i've ordered my own trapping supplies what i have here was provided by uh my boss the man that i work for and uh hopefully i'll get my own trapping supplies within the next couple of days and i'll be able to start doing this stuff uh in my free time so there we go a successful day another successful day and uh we're gonna we have more traps to check we have more traps back in this corner back here and uh, a whole other section of property that we need to check out. So we're going to go do that. And maybe we'll have another bobcat. Who knows? Y'all stick around.